Hello and welcome to Justin Dwyer Artistry. Today we're doing a drawing of a pastel sheep. We're going to do this drawing with a bit more energy and a little bit less realism than usual. So get ready and let's get cracking. I'm using black paper today just for something different. I'm going to come over the top of the black paper with some pastels, a little bit of charcoal and we'll see what emerges at the end. I've already marked out the dimensions with some faint pencil lines that you won't be able to see on the video, but I spent a few minutes just measuring and getting everything correct so that I wouldn't have to worry about proportions when I started layering in the pastel. I'm using a combination of pastel and charcoal in this drawing, which I often do. I have a variety of grey pastels, and for the very, very whitest highlights, we'll come back in at the end with a titanium white. Even though the paper is black, the charcoal is still a little bit darker than the black paper, and will create even darker darks. That gives me a full tonal range to work with. I start out by just feeling my way through the drawing. I'm looking for shapes. I'm looking for patterns. I'm looking for texture. I'm just playing at this point. I don't have a definite plan. I'm just making marks and seeing where the drawing goes. While I'm using a reference photo for this drawing, I'm not going to spend all my time staring at it like I often would if I was doing something more realistically. I'm going to spend a bit more time just enjoying the feeling of the drawing itself. And as always, any time I find that I've made a mistake, I've got my trusty eraser ready to come to the rescue. I love working with the soft pastels. There's so much variety you can get in the shapes and the colours and the textures that you can achieve with these types of drawing mediums. I prefer the charcoal over a pure black pastel for a lot of these drawings because the charcoal is softer and I feel like it has a more organic look than a harsh black line from pure black pastel. I have a lot of the shapes largely marked out and things are where I want them to be so I start to add in a little bit of detail. Again, I'm still just playing at this point. I'm just playing around, putting in marks, having a look, seeing what happens, what changes, and what will we do next. It's a constant process of evaluating, trying something, then stepping back again and seeing what's changed, what's different, what will we try next. I will often stop and do some work like this if I've been doing a lot of fine detail work or something is starting to get really annoying with how much detail I've got to build into it. It can be really freeing to just let go and pour out a bit of your heart and soul into your artwork. I'm using a variety of lines and shapes here to help me build the texture that I'm looking for. Sometimes I use a thin line, sometimes a thick line, sometimes a squiggly line. I'm going to use all of them in the drawing throughout. There can be no right or wrong lines in this drawing. It's just a question of finding the ones that work the best and using them to create the details that I'm looking for. I'm still identifying the lights and the darks in the drawing so that I can maintain some tonal values and still give the shape a three-dimensional feel. I add some fine lines across the nose of the sheet just to see what will happen. I leave it for a minute just to settle, just to let myself look at something else and then I'll come back and look at it again. I add some more detail in around the eyes. I want the eyes to be the focal point of this drawing, so they really need to be the sharpest point in the whole drawing with the greatest contrast. I spend some time working on the curly sheep's fleece. By the way, which side of the sheep has more wool? The outside, of course. And which animal is 80% wool? A wolf! I know, get back to the drawing, Justin. I stop and evaluate what I've done. I don't like the texture that I've achieved with the sheep's face, and I want to make some changes there. I can use my finger just to gently blend everything in together and this acts a bit like an eraser. I don't actually have to rub it out, I can just blend it smooth and then work back over the top again. I love using mediums that allow me to experiment and play and then change my mind and go back and redo. These are the mediums that give me the opportunity to learn the most while I'm doing my artwork because I can always go back and start again. And the kneadable eraser only costs $3 and it's the best friend I've ever had in my life. I can tidy things up, we can sharpen up the edges, clean up the smudges, and just get back into it. And now I can build the texture that I want. I'm using the side of the pastel, I'm drawing in quite hard. So I really want to build up some thick layers, and I want to create those, those textures in my drawing. What happened to the cat that ate a ball of wool? She had mittens. I know that was a woolly great one, but don't worry, there's more to come. Like, why did the sheep cross the road? To prove it wasn't chicken. And now back to the drawing. We've returned to the charcoal. I'm filling in some nice dark areas under the chin. I want to create some strong contrast there. We've got light coming in from two sides of the sheep with a dark shadow underneath the chin and I want to recreate that without agonizing over the details. You can use lines of all shapes and sizes in this drawing. There's no rules. You get to play and have some fun. Okay, that was a sheep shot, but wouldn't you know it? We're making progress in our drawing. What is a sheep's favorite song? Baby, don't hurt me anymore. All right, one more. Where do sheep go for holidays? 
they go to the Bahamas. And that's it, I can't keep bleeding on about these jokes. I've taken a sanguine coloured charcoal pencil and I'm making it a little tiny bit of brown into the eyes just to create a little bit more contrast in the drawing. The colour will stand out and that will help the eyes draw the viewer. I'm trying to find ways to get more energy into the drawing and one of the greatest ways to get energy in a drawing is with the use of energetic lines. By just twisting the pastels on their end I can get some really energetic and original lines that aren't contrived. And don't be afraid to use your off hand sometimes. You've got two hands, so give them both a go. You'll be amazed at what comes out sometimes. Oh, all right then, what kind of cars do sheep like to drive? Lamborghinis. What do you call a dancing sheep? A ballerina. Now no more, this is very serious. I've added a lot of very light pastel to the sheep's face to bring it forwards. That really makes it stand out from the darker sections behind. This will help it stand its own and come forward against all the very energetic lines that I'm now creating into the fleece. We don't have to make everything really refined all the time. Sometimes we can just let loose and have a little bit of fun. It's really important to enjoy the drawing process. Often we can just get bogged down in the nitty gritty and agonize over every little thing. Sometimes it's great to just lighten up and let fly with some random marks. And why did I choose to draw a sheep today? Well, because this is YouTube. And what is a sheep's favourite magazine? It's the Wall Street Journal. Why do sheep make such bad drivers? Because they're always doing U-turns. What do they listen to on the radio? Britney Shears. Now surely I've gone too far this time, but no. Here's one more. What do you call a hundred sheep rolling down a hill? A lamb slide. That's it. I'm all done and so is the drawing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Make sure you have a wonderful day and bye bye.